And now let's talk about the strategy and how we operate. So first, we are a software vendor as opposed to a service company. Our business is not to do service, but to develop, maintain, and sell subscription on the software. So if we look at the revenues of the company, 18% are services, 82% are recurring revenues. So basically the subscription people pay every month or every year uh, to use the software. So we basically get most of our revenue from the software. We do have a little bit of service because we have to help our partners or because we have to deliver ourselves some of the service. But our core business is really to sell the software. We have a partner network all around the world who is in charge of delivering the service for most more complex projects. It's quite cool because we have a recurring business. So like for this crisis, we did not decrease our revenue that much. Because it's a recurring revenue, uh, all customer pays every month or every year as they use the software. So unless they do bankrupt or they really stop using it, uh, the, the business is guaranteed for us uh, from year, year after year. We can check out, we can discuss after about the KPI, like the churn and so on, that impacts a lot. But basically, the majority of our customer renew every year. It's actually a 100% plus retention rate. So that means that the customer who are leaving are compensated by the existing customer who purchase more. So that's about our revenues that explain our, our profile as a company. And now let's talk about the product. And I think the, the, the right way I have to explain or do is that if you can imagine a mechanic, a mechanic without tools, you know, you have to fix a, a car or a, or a machine. It doesn't have tool at all. And if you imagine someone like that, he could be the best mechanic in the world. He will be very frustrated. He can be very frustrated, even though he could be very good. He won't do a good job. He will waste hours to do things that he could do in minutes and things like that. And a mechanic without tool is clearly inefficient. And if you look at how small to mid-sized companies operate, it's exactly like that. Most of the small and mid-sized companies, they don't have the right tools. They basically have nothing. They use a lot of Excel. Sometimes they have a website, so they have an accounting software, they have another software for the inventory. A lot of manufacturing operation or service are done on Excel. The help desk is done on their e in their email. And so they record several times the same data. They don't have consolidated data and statistics about the business. Uh, you have people wasting hours to fill data in the system rather than doing productive and efficient work. Most of the time, they don't notice about it. A lot of small and mid-sized companies are completely inefficient, but they are used to it. They think it's always like that. They think it's normal to record all the data manually. They think it's normal that every time they have to sign a document, they have to print it, sign it, scan it, put it in the document management system rather than using electronic signatures. And so a lot of small and mid-sized companies are very bad at operating um, and people suffer from that. And our job is to provide the right tools for these employees. So if we summarize what we do what to do, uh, we have all these applications, but the goal of this application is to help people do more in less time, is to help an accountant, to avoid an accountant to record every bill manually, is to avoid the salesperson to record everything in the system, it's fully integrated with his email and, uh, and, and his phone calls. It's avoid someone to create a website manually when he can use a website builder and a few drag and drops, he can uh, create landing page for his marketing campaign and so on and so on. So that's what we do. We make small and mid-sized companies more efficient, and we do it by providing good tools uh, for every department and that are fully integrated to each other's. In terms of products, uh, we are extremely special on the market because uh, we are probably the only one, at least at, at a certain size, uh, to be open source. So we basically have two products. We have what we call Odoo Community, which is an open source product. You can download it for free. Uh, and it has pretty much all the applications I showed you. Actually, it has all the applications I showed you, but it doesn't have everything. And uh, you, so people can download it, install it, sell it to people. It's free, so you get access to the source code, so people can contribute and create new application. We have 26,000 apps developed on Odoo. So we have apps for healthcare, for food industries, for aeronautics, for pretty much every industry. And on top of the free version of the community, which is open source, we have uh, extra features that are for a fee, and we call it Odoo Enterprise. It's another product. It's another product, but it's actually we market it as a different product. But, but technically, 
is just a set of features on top of Odoo, of, of the of Odoo community, the open source version. So these extra features we charged a fee for, we charge a fee for them. They both contribute to each other. The open source product, the free one, doesn't bring money, of course, but it brings millions of users. We currently have 5.6 millions of users, so it's a huge marketing. And you probably know, but the biggest marketing ever is word of mouth. It's stronger than pretty much everything you can do in marketing is to have happy customer. And the uh, Odoo Enterprise, the extra features for a fee uh, bring us revenue. Uh, today, the revenue is around 1 million, 100 million euro uh, per year. So, and with this revenue, we improve the software. So we improve both the open source ver version and the features that are for a fee. To give you an example of the split, uh, there is a, a page on a website, um, Odoo Editions. So we have 1,000 employees, but we only have one or two products, depending if you see come enterprise and community differently. But uh, you have a page on a website that explains the difference between the community and enterprise. But basically, the applications like the website builder, sale purchase, point of sale, um, CRM that I showed you too, are open source, so it's free. And we do have a few applications that are for a fee. That includes accounting, timesheet for time tracking, um, uh, and some HR applications and, and so on. So we have a few applications for a fee and a lot of them, it's, uh, the, the split in between is 80%, 20%. So 80% of our features are in, are in Odoo Committee and 20% is in Odoo Enterprise. Okay, so that, uh, that's uh, that, that our products. The way to distribute a product, we have two ways. Uh, the direct and indirect way. We did the opposite of the rest of the market. We started with the indirect. Pretty much all the time, software vendors, they start selling direct to customer, but we did we started indirect. So it basically means that uh, uh, we have partners who sell the software to their customers and uh, they sell their service. They sell the implementation service. So business analysis, uh, importation of the data, configuration of the system, uh, custom development, and so on. And when they sell their service, when they sell a project, they also sell a subscription to the enterprise uh, to their customer. That's all uh, part of the revenue. So the way it works for the end indirect sales channel is that we have a team which is called partnership recruitment. It's a team of salespeople who recruit partners. These partners, they, most of them are companies selling services on Odoo. Uh, they are managed by account managers. So we have salespeople who are account manager. Typically, an account manager manages 50 partners. And the goal, the goal of this account manager is for the partners to become better. And these partners, they sell projects to their clients. And every time they sell a project to their client, the client go live, he starts using the system. And then we assign someone else, another sales team. Uh, it's called customer success. We do the follow-up to be sure that uh, the customer is happy and every year he renew uh, his contract. That's for the indirect sales. Usually they work on the larger contracts because the bigger the company, the more service they need. So that's why we need the partners all around the world. For the smaller company, they can use uh, Odoo out of the box, so zero to 50 users. Uh, they basically go online on odoo.com. They start the free trial and then they need some L2 use or sometimes not. And there we have a, a direct sales team who, um, who help them uh, buy Odoo and check if Odoo can fit all their needs. And same thing, when a customer is, has deployed Odoo for himself, then we have a customer success team who does the follow-up of the long term to be sure it renews and upsell. So that's how we sell the, the software. So we have five sales teams. And we replicate that in all of our companies, in Belgium, San Francisco, Dubai, India. They all have these five sales teams. The markets. Um, if, you, if we have to segment the market, I would say you have to do it by size. So usually you have the software for the large companies and the software for the mid-size and the software for the small companies. So let's say the small, so small companies, zero to 50 employees. 50 to 250 is the mid-size. And 250 plus is the large companies. Today, the market of what we call ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, is saturated for the large companies. So they basically all have something uh, because they need it. They are so, so big that uh, without that, they could not operate. 
So they use SAP or Oracle or sometimes custom uh, solution, but they all have something. So it's a saturated market. So it's basically a market of replacement. But the thing is, on the small companies, it's the complete opposite. On the small companies, they have nothing. So the equipment rate is only 18%. So that basically means that small companies could not afford an ERP. They could not afford something integrated because it was too expensive, too complex, too big of a change. Um, and basically, most of our competitors are very complex. Uh, they are completely bloated. So small companies cannot afford that. Our market is, and our uh, strategy is not to fight against competitor. It's not to go on the large companies because it's a saturated market, but to go on the small and mid-sized ones uh, because they have nothing. So we don't fight against competitor. We just uh, address the 82% of the market who has nothing because they couldn't afford the other software that were too complex. And we come with a solution that is simple. So um, to say it in another way, we are not fighting against competitor. We are trying to crack an equation some so nobody succeeded to crack. We are trying to bring integrated management software to small and mid-sized companies, which is something that was not possible before we arrived. Um, and the way to do it, our strategy or focus, I would say, is to focus on two things. And pretty much every department, every people that to do are very focused on these two things, is to be complete. Because even the small companies, they have complex needs. They have accounting, they have a website, they do social marketing, they have an inventory in a different country. So they need a lot of things, a lot of features. But most of the time, they cannot afford uh, existing ERP. So we need to be extremely affordable, low cost. So, and basically everything we do, whether it's our implementation methodology, the research and development in the product, are always to uh, increase these two things make a better software, more more complete, uh, that help people do more in less time at a lower cost. Everything we do is to try to reduce this cost so that it becomes accessible to the small and mid-sized companies, affordable. In the cost, you have different components because we talk about the total cost of ownership. And for a customer, the total cost of ownership is not only the subscription of the software, what they pay to us, but also the service to uh, do the change, to help them uh, import the data, train their user and so on. So usually the cost of the partner and the cost of the maintenance. So they need support and upgrades uh, within the next years. And we try to have a very low price on this with the best product, product ever. So we could say pretty much all our focus since a few years, since 15 years, I would say, is to improve the value they get for the money. Um, we can still have a look at the market. Uh, you have two types of players. And to rank these players, I did a graph um, based on two axes um, to analyze the product. It's not about the marketing and the branding and so on, just the product. And you can rank products based on the fact that they have a very good user experience, usability. It's simple to use, it's fast, it's modern, and so on. So that's the X, X axis. And basically, when you are simple, you attract a lot of users. And on the other hand, you have the software that have a lot of features. They can do everything from sale to purchase to manufacturing to accounting. That's And so they get a lot of uh, revenue per user. People pay millions to get SAP, SAP running. Um, and you have two types of players. You have the ERP players. They do have a lot of features, SAP, Microsoft Dynamics, Oracle. They do have a lot of features. They, they charge a lot per user because they have a lot of value. But it's very complex software, so they only address a small segment of the market, so they only have a few, a limited number of users. Their way to grow is to get more revenue per user instead of going into, into the volume, so they grow or, uh, vertically. On the other hand, uh, so in this segment, the ERP will find SAP, Microsoft Dynamics, Oracle, and so on. On the other hand, you have the single apps player. You could have uh, WinBooks for the accounting, uh, QuickBooks for the accounting in the US, Trello for task management, MailChimp to send emails. Uh, and you have plenty of single app player. They do only one thing, so not a lot of revenue per user. But they do it very simple. So usability is good and they can attract a lot of users. And these guys don't evolve usually in feature. They evolve into acquiring, they focus more into acquiring, acquiring more users. And this is where Odoo is different from the rest of the market, is that we try to do both. 
We try to do extremely complete, have all the features you need from sale to purchase, to website, to point of sale, to manufacturing. And at the same time, being modern, very fast, flexible, cheap, and so on, like the single app players. And we actually succeed. Uh, we, all, we succeed because we sell tens of thousands of uh, small companies at a very low price. But we succeeded at a small scale, I would say. Now we have to do it at, la at a larger scale. And uh, the, guy, the UX guys, the, the single app players, they evolve on the right. We, for this, probably I have to show a technical presentation after, maybe. But we, are, we have an ability to grow in diagonal. So every time we change one thing in a do, like we improve the web interface or the mobile interface, or we add a email communication, it directly applies to all our applications. So all our apps improve in one shot every time we develop something. So we basically evolve in diagonal like this. And it's for a technical reason about uh, how we manage the inner inheritances between objects and things like that. So it's probably not the scope of this talk. So that is the landscape uh, um, of the competitor. In terms of pricing, if we look at the ERP, so the guy here on the top left corners, most of the players on the market uh, are around $880 per user per month. So SAP SAP is $185 on average per user per month. NetSuite is a little bit lower with $180. And Microsoft Dynamics is $145 per user per month. At Odoo, we are $28, uh, $25 or €18 Euro per user per month. So it's basically like five, seven times cheaper than uh, the rest of the market. So that's what I said when I say we want to be affordable. Um, I can explain how we did that because it's not what, the question is not where we are, but how we did to get there. And there is only one thing that costs pretty much the same price of Odoo uh, and deliver the same boost of efficiency of the employees, I would say, and it's a cup of coffee. So basically, if you offer the coffee to all your employees, so you pay for the cup and the coffee and the sugar and the, and the distribution machine, it basically costs $1 per employee per day because every employee drinks on average two coffees and it's 50 cents per cup. So basically, we could say Odoo uh, costs you uh, more or less the same price than a coffee machine for the, your employees, which is unbelievable for a full scope ERP software that runs everything in the company. So the, the price is very low for the value we provide. All right. I continue. Let's have a look uh, now at the landscape of the larger app players, so the ERP ones. And if you ask a buyer what matters for you in terms of uh, when you buy an ERP, what, what will be your main criteria? And basically, there will, there will be six. Uh, the industry. So if I am an hospital, I will look for a solution that is adapted to hospital. If I'm an NGO, I want, I want a solution that works for NGOs. If I'm a, a manufacturing company, I will look for a solution that that is with people who knows who are expert in my in my manufacturing in, in my industry. The buyers are extremely well influenced by the branding. It's like I will buy a CP because it's a secure choice because everyone knows it's a CP because I won't get fired because I choose the CP. And then they, they, they assess software based on the number of features. The more features you have, the best it is. Like, do you do this, that, that, that? And the more you check the box, the more your chance you have to win the RFP, the request for proposal. And then the technical quality is important. Are you able to adapt the software to my custom needs? The pricing, of course, is very important. And the user experience, uh, will the employees be efficient and productive? Will people love the software? It's new. It was not important seven years ago. But nowadays, it's, it's, it's no part of the main criteria that a buyer chooses when selecting such a software. And let's have, let's have a look at where the different players are on this graph. If you look at SCP, they are strong in, brand, in uh, industries. They cover 26 industries. They do aeronautics, food industries, manufacturing, 26 different industries. And they have experts and brochures and websites for all these industries. It's a strong branding. Uh, they are the leader in the ERP market. They have a lot of features. They do sale, purchase, manufacturing, accounting, but they don't do the modern feature. They don't do social marketing. They don't do point of sale. They don't do e-commerce. Actually, they do it, but by integrating different software that they connect with them to, to, to reach these new features. 
So the features, they are good, but not so good. Technical quality is bad. It's software they developed 20 years ago. So it's, it's based on Nabab or even SAP Nano. It's quite bloated. So it takes months from when you want to customize it. So the value of the technical quality of their software is very bad. It, it costs a lot to adapt. The pricing we saw it is expensive. So the value of the pricing is low and it's painful to use. Uh, the user experience is bad. The screens are painful. Everyone suffer pretty much all the users are not happy with the system. And if we do the same exercise to rank uh, different players, like let's do it with Microsoft Dynamics, you will have this curve. Very good in industry and branding. Everyone knows Microsoft. Good in features, but not as good as SAP. A little bit more modern, at least they are web-based and so on with my 365. Uh, pricing is still high, but better than uh, SAP. And UX is uh, better than SAP, but still low. That's Microsoft Dynamics. We could do the same for Oracle. And you can analyze the world markets of uh, ERP for mid-sized companies. And you will see that uh, every player will have this, will fit in this same curve, being very good in industry branding and features and quite low in technical pri quality pricing and UX. And basically the world markets fit this segment. And it's not because of strategy. There is a reason for that. And the reason is it takes 15 to 20 years to build such a software. So when they started building their software 15 years ago or 20 years ago, uh, they were based on, uh, um, I would say, old school platform today. Uh, so technical quality is not good. And because of that, the pricing, the, the system is complex and then the pricing is high and everything follows. So pre pretty much every player on the market follows this curve. And if we have to draw or do, uh, we are here. So we are nowhere in industry. So basically, we don't have a strategy per industry. We do have a strategy per app. So we want to be the leader in CRM. We want to be the leader in uh, accounting, manufacturing. We, we don't want to be the leader of NGOs, food industries, or healthcare. So we have no strategy per industry, even though we are very strong in some industries. So we are the number one in NGOs. We have the, the six of the top 10 NGOs in the world, like Doctor Without Borders, Médecins Sans Frontières, uh, Red Cross, Croix Rouge, uh, and so on, use or do, but we don't have a strategy per, uh, for the NGOs. We don't have experts dedicated to NGOs. We don't have a website to market to NGOs. So uh, even though we are the leader in NGOs, in manufacturing, we're very strong in service industries, I don't consider that we have a strategy per industry, so we, we are low. We are a small company compared to the others, so the branding is low. Nobody knows or do. We some people start to know it in Belgium, but it's still lower than Microsoft or SAP. Features, we are much higher than the others because we do have the modern features. We do have e-commerce, point of sale, business intelligence, everything integrated in the same software. It's very modern, so technical quality is good. The pricing is very low, which is a good value for the customer. And the UX is much better than the others, but still not perfect, still not as good as a simple iPad application, I would say, that just do notes taking or things like that. So that, that is the positioning of Odoo. And so if, if we summarize, it's not that we are better than the other. Um, I would say our success and the reason why we probably are one of the strongest growing company of Belgium is because we are different from the others. And we, we worked on this difference. Okay, and so if you followed me <laughs> to know, you should, you should see what should be our strategy for the future. So if you have to decide to invest in industry or in branding or in features or in pricing or in UX, where should Odoo invest? Should we invest in industry or in branding because we are, lo we are low or should we invest in UX and so on? And the, reason, the, the answer is uh, because our strength is to be different, uh, most of our investment should focus on increasing our difference rather than trying to be better. And so if we invest in industry and in branding, because we are bad compared to the others on that, uh, that's just utopic. Uh, it's, you, you cannot be the best in everything. You could not say, I will be the best of industry, branding, features, technical quality, pricing. It, it, it won't work. It's just not possible. We don't have the marketing budget of SAP or, or so on. So it's just not possible to say, I will try to increase industry and branding. I will, we will always be lower than the others. So instead of investing on industry and branding, what we do, we invest 
on increasing the difference. So we invest on UX, user experience. So we make the software much easier to use, much fun, much enjoyable, enjoyable for the users. We make our employees more productive and happy because that's where we increase the difference with, with the other. So the strategy in terms of product of uh, do is to overinvest compared to the others in UX and underinvest in industry and in branding. So you probably will never see an industry menu on the odoo.com website. All the ERP players, they have an industry menu, so they have description for every industry, they have brochures, they have experts, and you don't have that on, on the website because it's a choice. We decide to underinvest in these so that we can overinvest in the others. Okay, that's about the positioning. What else do we have? Oh, uh, we I explained about the strategy, the positioning, the pricing, and so on, and how we sell and distribute the software. But something we should never forget is that uh, we have a strong mar market. We do less than 0.1% of the market, so our market is huge. We are extreme. We are very well positioned compared to the competition. Our product is great. The strategy is good and so on, but all those things doesn't matter too much because in every success, the strategy plays only a little role. The big role of the success is the execution, is how we operate, is uh, our people, uh, the way we uh, leverage uh, people's strengths, the, 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 how fast we run and things like that. And it outperforms everything, execution outperforms everything else. If you need to, if you want to learn more about to do, we have our annual event. It's a huge event with 50,000 people. It's completely free. It's on experience.odoo.com, experience.odoo.com. And you can register there. It's online. It's 200 business conferences to learn everything about company ma enterprise management, software, Odoo, and so on. Uh, I can show you the agenda just to uh, up. So just go to experience.odoo.com and you register. Just to have a look, is the agenda is just on one day, and I think I can even scroll horizontally. Yes. Um, so if you want, you can uh, have a look there, and you can follow. We have plenty of conference and presentation. And the other thing is, uh, we do recruit a lot, of course, uh, because we grow 60% per year. And so if you go to our job page, you will see all our positions. But uh, and probably for you, the most, uh, the best one is business advisor or business analyst. It's a role of project management, analyzing the business. So it's a service part of Odoo where we help small and mid-sized companies and also corporate. We have a team working for larger ones uh, to better run their business. Uh, so we help them uh, deploy Odoo and use it and transform the way they operate. And if you are looking for a job after, uh, there is something funny on the website. We also do payroll in Odoo. It's one of our app. And you can check how much money you will win if you apply at Odoo. So you could say, okay, I have zero year of experience as a customer service representative. You check the salary and we publish transparently uh, how much we pay for everyone. And you have the, the salary uh, that we, we offer to if you apply here. It's the average of the team. So some people get much more, others get less. Um, if you are uh, way above expectation, you can get up to 70% more than that. But it gives you an idea on how much we pay. And you can configure your salary. So you could say, I want a company car. You have all the cars we are available that are here. Some are old ones, used ones, or some are new ones. And then you could say, I want a phone subscription. How many days of extra time off you need? Holidays, eight extra. Uh, do you want some uh, representation fee? Do you want a fuel card? And you do your setup. And you will have your package uh, if you apply it to do that. That is computed automatically here. So it's interesting, even if you don't apply a to-do so that you can compare uh, if the others pay as much as we do. Yes, um, so Shopify is an e-commerce for those that don't know with the specialty of, it's like the e-commerce for mom and pops, small businesses. And um, and we, 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 we are launching on September 30, so in, in, a, in two weeks, a new version of our website builder that will compete that is much, much better than Squarespace, Wix, and Weebly. So I believe we will become the leader, at least in terms of product. It will take time in terms of market on website builders. And the next step is to become the leader on e-commerce. We already have a very strong e-commerce. But um, our e-commerce is a little bit different than the one of Shopify because we target more the mid-size and then target more the small companies. 
Uh, is Odoo willing to expand past Europe and South America? We are actually all around the world. Huh? We already have uh, partners in 160 countries all around the world. But in our companies, we have uh, North America. Uh, we have a company in Buffalo, New York, and San Francisco. We have Asia. We have a company in China, one in Hong Kong, and one in India. Um, so how did I get how did I get the idea to to do a do? Usually the idea is nothing. The execution is everything. So I could have done something else. I'm pretty sure we would have had a good results too. <laughs> but I basically did a lot of things. I I did the auction in Europe. I was the the leader in the art market. So auction house, antiques dealers, and uh, uh, art galleries. I was the leader in Belgium. I was selling 15,000 uh, objects per month, um, consolidating most of the uh, auction houses of Belgium. So I was selling more objects than eBay.be. And I was a student and I, with a very bad business model. So the revenue was 15 or 15,000 uh, euro per month. I was actually very happy as a student with that, but it was a very bad business model. eBay did much more money while selling less items than me. So um, I also did open stuff. It was a shop where we saw, I sold um, branded Linux stuff uh, like T-shirt, polos, logo, with logos of Linux, uh, Free Software Foundation. Uh, I I did some. I created some plush in uh, in Asia, then imported some containers and sold all around the world, uh, all around Europe. I did a lot of e-commerce and I did a lot of things, and this one worked better than the others. So it's so not like I had an idea. It's just that I did a lot of things. So the lesson is try, at least one will work. Yeah, and it's good to try when you are a student because you don't have to pay the allocation. Uh, how do we say that? You are still uh, in the, uh, charge of your parents, so you don't have to pay the social charges. Uh, so it costs nothing to start your business when you are young. What is the maiden cost of the software that Odoo provides? So basically the price of the software is 18 euro per user in per month. There is a small extra per application, but it's very light. So 18 euro per user per month is a good idea. And that includes everything. That includes the hosting, the support, the maintenance, the upgrades, unlimited questions, and so on. So in the price, everything is there. There is no extra. There is only an extra when uh, partners or customers develop custom modules because they have to upgrade their custom developments. They do. So SCP um, launched uh, SAP ANA, which is a more modern architecture, but it's still extremely bloated. Microsoft, who had um, um, uh, Navision and Axapta and Great Plains, two different software, moved to uh, Dynamics, another more modern software. But it's still very bad. Uh, and the reason being is that you just it's something extremely complex. It's very complex to do something simple. And to make such a software that manage complex businesses, all the areas of the business, and make it simple, it's extremely complex. And most of them fail because it's not a matter of putting millions of dollars and putting 1,000 engineers. You don't get something simple if you do that. So they all tried, but they failed. Like SCP has even has a campaign which is a uh, run simple, where they claim they are very simple. But I bet you cannot use uh, SCP and do a quotation on your own. I think planning is guessing. So it's part of the way we operate also. We don't waste time doing some budget and long-term plans. So I don't have a, a number for where we see in the, or do in five years because it's just a waste of time. Every time I've tried, every time I've tried to define what we will become in five years, I was always extremely off, either too small or too big, but always off. Um, so it's a waste of time. But one thing is certain. In order to understand the future, you have to understand the past. Sorry, in order to predict the future, you have to understand the past. And if you look at the past on uh, the IT, uh, on informatics, uh, it started with operating system. And the operating system, before you had a lot of operating system, MS-DOS, uh, Dr. DOS, Unix, Minix. Uh, and at the end, only a few survived, uh, Windows, uh, Linux, and uh, iOS and Android, which is Linux. So only three survived. And then you, have, you had the word processor. You had a lot of word processor, Works, WordPress, uh, Lotus, no, Lotus, and all the things. And at the end, you only have Microsoft Office and maybe Google uh, Docs. And it has been the same everywhere uh, in the IT. It started with a lot of players, and then there is a consumerization of the, of the market, and then it ends up with two or three players. 
it just turns out that uh, management software are way more complex. They are higher in the um, in the levels um, in in the chain because they are extremely business oriented. And so we are still at this phase where there are a lot of players. I used to say that there are software vendors in every village because there is really a lot. Uh, tens of thousands of people are trying to do management software. And uh, the consolidation phase started. And I'm pretty sure that it will follow the rest of the industry. Probably in five or maybe 10 years, there will be only three or four players left. And my goal is to be amongst these three players when it will happen. And I believe I'm extremely well placed to do that. In terms of product, for sure, <laughs> the only problem is that we are too small compared to the others. Did having an open source software help you to develop or do faster? Yes, a lot. So, <laughs> but, but there is pros and cons. Uh, being open source, it helped us to develop faster. So we could create accounting in a lot of countries. Um, we could do 100 countries very easily because we were working with community of accountants all around the world. We get feedback. We work online with all our contributors and users. So it's a very good development model. But open source is not a business model. So what you win by increasing the speed of development with open source, you lose it on the price because you, we, you cannot charge for it. It's free. And today, even today, our biggest competitor is Odoo Community. It's the free version of Odoo. Um, and so it's also the reason why your price is only 18 euro as opposed to 180 like the others is that we couldn't charge more, otherwise people will move to the community rather than using on the enterprise. So yes, it helps to develop faster, but the cons are much, much bigger, so I don't recommend open source to everyone. <laughs> and, and it's also very complex to be open source because it's like a transparent market. Because everyone plays with the software and try it and can download the source code and so on before buying, there is a like a consolidation effect of the on the number one. The best one gets everyone using it, and the more you have, the more you grow because you have a strong community. So you have a virtuous cycle. But there is no no place for a second or third player. So it's ex it's extremely hard to be in open source. And unfortunately, we are the number one in everything about management. Uh, are you considering stopping Odoo community at some point? No, of course. Why would we stop something that made our success? I mean, it's part of our success to be uh, this open core business model, so open source plus some extra features. It's, it works very well. It took me 13 years to make it work. We were, it was, I think I've had uh, like eight years close to bankruptcy be before that. Uh, but now that it works and now that it makes us unique on the market, we would be foolish to stop that. It's actually the opposite. We reinforce that. We still invest 80% of everything in the open source version of the product. Just do it. I mean, people spend too much time about thinking, finding ideas, uh, deciding how they will create a company. The reason I'm here is just I did a lot of things. 